I had a great sleep here in Delaware, but the shower is the most unforgiving thing I've ever seen. It runs for 10 seconds and then turns itself off, literally 10 seconds. And you couldn't adjust the temperature at all. But I've got more important problems than that. I was planning on getting to Florida by the end of this week, right when a hurricane is apparently supposed to land. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna forfeit an entire week waiting for a storm to pass, it's my vacation. I know for today, I wanna get down to Virginia Beach, spend a few days seeing Yorktown and a lot of historic sites around there. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the hurricane for now, but yeah, that's in the back of my mind. I said I'd been hoping to find some good strip malls on my road trip down south. I think I finally found it right here in Maryland as a Walmart, a Dunks, and a grocery store all in the same plaza. I actually just spent like five hours in a Dunkin' Donuts. So not much I can do today. I just want to drive straight to Virginia Beach. I think I might crash in Virginia Beach for like two days or something. I didn't realize how close to Virginia I was last night. I blasted through Maryland in like 10 minutes. When I got to Virginia, there was a rest stop there. Had to stop because I had an old warship, a Confederate ironclad warship on its front lawn. Had all the stuff you'd expect, Confederate flag, Trump stuff. I got a little sticker. But right now I am driving over the longest bridge I've ever been on. I wonder if this is one of the longest bridges in the world. It connects from, it goes across Chesapeake Bay. I cannot see the other side. I cannot see land from where I got on. It's actually kind of scary. Turn left. First Landing State Park says I have to check in at the main office. Closed until 8 p.m.? the heck? What is this? Late arrivals. Oh wait, here I am. It's called First Landing Campground because I guess this is where English settlers first stepped on foot on North America in 1607. It's also the first campground I could check into without having to interact with another person. I'll give you a tour of the campground right now, but I warn you, there's aircraft flying overhead left and right. I think they're military choppers. I guess there's a base nearby. Like every 15 minutes, the campground itself is like a labyrinth. Easy to get lost here. Virginia Beach, the city is right here. I can walk along the beach to it. I think that's what I'm gonna do. But over here, there's a giant warship. I so want to get on that. I would rather do a tour of that than a tour of the city. There was a little placard there. I thought it would give me some neat info about the history of the land or maybe the fauna or flora. It was about the freaking antenna behind it. I thought that was kind of funny. I also just realized I have not set foot on a beach in two years. Boca Chica Beach in Texas, when I went down there to visit the rockets, that was exactly two years ago this week. Yeah, that made me remember how much I hate walking on sand. It's two steps forward, one step back. Anyway, I cut back through into the town center. Virginia Beach, the city, is only like a half mile from my campground. And you can get to it by walking on the sand, if you don't mind that. The place, however, is dead. I don't know if it's because it's fall or because it's a Tuesday or a weird day of the week but there's no life here. There's also no sidewalks in Virginia Beach. Like there's no way to get from your campground to the town center or to the park where all the hiking trails are. I can't believe that. Sun sets in like 20 minutes anyway, so I should probably start walking back. I brought my little flashlight. I didn't bring a headlamp, but I can walk the beach in the dark. There were people kayaking on the ocean. I'm not sure I'm ready to do that yet with my Oru. Tonight, I'm gonna do something I haven't done in a long time, which is edit outside. It's 75 degrees here. 
for the past month and a half, it's been too cold in Massachusetts to be out at night. I also need to think about what I'm doing tomorrow and that hurricane that's coming this way. It seems like God telling me to stay here and wait it out and not move. And frankly, I'm okay with that. Today, I spent five and a half hours editing in a Dunkin' Donuts, four and a half hours driving. Yeah, you do the math on that. good day for kayaking or for hiking see this would be a great day to do editing wish I didn't spend all yesterday doing it, it was beautiful I mean this is beautiful too so the camp camper next to me is playing some true crime TV show like 24 hours it ran all night long and this guy over here is playing the national anthem it's 8 o'clock in the morning The Battle of Yorktown was probably the most important battle that ever happened on North America. Earlier this summer, I saw the battlefields of Bennington and Saratoga basically foraged the entire time. They had wild raspberries growing through the battlefield. Not sure they'll have that here though, but I can park at the visitor center here and basically spend the entire day walking around this campus. It's pretty expansive, lots of monuments, the visitor center is open right now, and of course it has a cannon in front. Let's see what they have inside. Once the British second in command, General Charles O'Hara, handed over Cornwallis's sword, the British army continued south on a road lined by the American and French troops. And on this field, surrender field, the British forces grounded their weapons. A siege, not a battle. That's what Yorktown was. Before the actual land battle was a massive sea battle between the French and British navies, they actually have a replica of one of the British ships, the Charon, that was destroyed. You can walk inside. They even have some recovered cannons from the actual ship they pulled up out of the York River on display. As for the actual land battle, it was pretty intense. Basically, the Americans dug zigzag trenches closer and closer towards the British. They dug at night. And one thing I learned here that I didn't know, George Washington had a son who died just days before the surrender at Yorktown. That must have been tough. U.S. Congress actually enacted a law mandating a monument for the Yorktown battlefield just 10 days after the battle happened, but it wasn't built for another 100 years. It took the Civil War to reunite the country and appropriate the funds. Standing on the top of the monument is Lady Liberty. This is actually supposed to be the same woman who's the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. Uh, I can't tell the resemblance from down below, but right next to the monument is the historic York town. A lot of the buildings are preserved. I think it exits to the main commercial area on the other side too. So I'm gonna walk through here for the rest of the afternoon. It's hard to tell what buildings here are historic monuments and actual functioning businesses. They put them right next to each other. Thankfully, this coffee shop right here is running and I got my caffeine fix. My favorite thing about this place though is right outside there's a cemetery and they put picnic tables in the cemetery. Why did they never think of this in Massachusetts? This is my kind of place. Yorktown reminds me a lot of Concord, Massachusetts. Seems very ritzy, very well maintained. 
on the walk to the Revolutionary War Museum where I'm going next, they have the remnants of some of the English fortifications here. Yeah, I can see that how that would be difficult to cross under fire. I love the hologram back there. The American Revolution Museum in Yorktown is not just about the war, it's about the whole period of American history leading up to it, which I think we kind of gloss over in school, at least my school did. Interesting stuff. Also a good use of technology in there. I got to talk to a hologram at one point. My favorite was this little interactive thing that showed you all the battles of the American Revolutionary War. I had no idea how many there were and how some of them were way out in the Midwest. Anyway, when you get outside, there's a encampment that I guess pays homage to Valley Forge and they're firing guns off over here. One thing I'm not liking about this American Revolution Museum is figuring out how to exit the place. I'm trapped in, I'm literally climbing over the redoubts right now just to get back near the river. I imagine this is what the Americans went through in 1781. Yorktown is a great place to spend an afternoon on your feet, something I've not done enough of on this road trip. Yeah, I've been a little sedentary with all the kayaking lately. I wanna continue south towards Florida, get some more driving in done today. Next place I'd wanna see was Myrtle Beach. What is that famous for, golf? I don't know, but it's about five or six hours south I'm going to get back to the van, start driving there. Not sure where I'm going to sleep, but we'll figure that out together. After I got in my van at Yorktown, I just decided I've had enough of like the ocean and beaches and stuff. I've been hugging the coast since Boston pretty much, and I don't know, I needed a break. I need to get out of the Chesapeake Bay area. I've been there for like four days in a row. I just punched Tampa into Google Maps and I'm driving up Beeline. I'm gonna drive as far as I can tonight. The sky is looking amazing. I tapped out. I'm staying somewhere tonight that I vowed that I would never stay on this trip, but I couldn't drive south any further. It's gonna get dark soon. The rain starts tonight and the hurricane touches ground in about 12 hours from now. I was making a beeline towards Tampa. I looked on the latest hurricane update map and I thought it was gonna veer like towards the Midwest. Nope, now they're predicting it's gonna go right over me. I'm in the Raleigh, North Carolina area right now. So I'm staying at this awful place. Oh, but this is where I call it a night for you guys. I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I'm out of the Chesapeake Bay. Yorktown was a ton of fun. Virginia Beach was fun, but I'm glad to be away from the ocean and out of the mid-Atlantic states once and for all. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably be the hurricane video. You're gonna wanna watch that. For now, peace out.